Hey, Internet. It's the Russians, I tell you. It's the Russians. <laughs> Hey, Internets, it's Jake from Mini Terrain Domain, and this is Welcome to Hell, Michigan. Part two of what was a one-shot is now a trilogy. <laughs> if you missed part one, uh, you will be able to catch that on YouTube this weekend. Um, I had a bit of a busy week and got behind on uploading games, so there's uh, a couple of welcome to paradise games a uh, sky metal iron gods and will be two episodes of welcome to hell michigan all to be uploaded this uh this weekend um uh so um yeah we're gonna we're gonna do what is ostensibly act two tonight and then um in two weeks we will finish up with um act three of this game uh they may try to um stretch this out longer but if they do i'll just kill them all next time i'm not afraid Fun. to kill a bunch of teens and an adult um <laughs> ppk so uh yeah we're me. we are playing uh in this is a, a spinoff of my original uh, setting, Welcome to Paradise, Michigan, uh, which is a quirky fantasy setting. Uh, we have a regular game that's in its second season. I think we're something like... Uh, last week was our 61st episode, actually. Uh, yesterday, last week. Yesterday was our 61st episode um, over two seasons. Um, nice. And we've we're showing no signs of stopping, so be sure to check that out. Um, I don't have indicators on screen, however, due to popular audience demand last week, any subscriptions, resubs, gift subs, uh, five hundred bit cheers, five dollar tips, all of that stuff converts to domain pops for all of you. You currently have one remaining. Five were spent to turn Gary into cartoon. Um, Likes. Totally. Worth it. But you do have <laughs> one. Right, the, the domain <laughs> pops are a way that you, the audience, can have a, an impact on the game. The players can use those to add plus one to for every pop they spend to their rolls. In addition, we are using the adversity token system that's part of the main rules. Every time you fail, you earn a adversity token as well as usually a consequence um so uh remember that um we are all adults here ostensibly um we are all adults playing as teenagers or um irresponsible adults and uh you may hear adult language graphic depictions of violence Intense role play situations. There may may or may not be substance use and or abuse. All of these things can happen in one of our games. Um, if that's something that you're not cool with or don't want to don't want to see or not in the right headspace, please feel free to go somewhere else. We will not be offended. Um, but do know that we have had a session zero. We have established our lines and veils, and we have placed safety tools into play. Uh, we use a traffic light system. It's a very simple system that allows for the players to indicate in a scene uh, their level of comfort. Um, I encourage you all to use safety tools in your own games. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop that link. Um, there's an excellent TTRPG safety tool kit available online. That's where I got some of the some of the information that I use. Please do check it out. It doesn't matter if you are running a one shot for um, strangers on the internet or you are running a uh, new campaign after 30 years of playing with the same people. You should always run session zeros with your players. Make sure everybody understands where everybody uh, is coming from in terms of lines and veils and knows that they have safety tools to rely on so that everybody feels safe and comfortable at your gaming table. Uh, the last thing I want to mention before we start rolling into hell here is just a reminder that you matter. Whether you believe it or not, it's true. 
there are any number of reasons you might be struggling. Um, it doesn't matter what the reason is. Maybe you're not even struggling. Maybe you just need somebody to talk to. Um, I struggled for a long time with anxiety and depression and wasn't sure how to get started. Um, eventually through the help of friends, I was able to find a way to get started. And, um, I don't want anybody to have to struggle in that way. So we've made it as simple as possible. Just come here into our chat, type exclamation point help. And a couple of URLs will pop up. Uh, you can check out, uh, find a helpline.com or the growing list of resources at take this.org. I mentioned before that take this.org is currently raising funds. Uh, I believe they were trying to raise $80,000 by the end of September in order to keep going. Uh, I did just see an announcement from Dr. B that they've partnered with Humble and Paizo. And there's currently a, a uh, Paizo Pathfinder Humble, uh, Undead Humble Bundle um, that all money raised through that Humble Bundle purchase uh, up to $50,000 will be matched to raise money for uh, takethis.org. I think the work that they do is incredibly important in the convention space and in the mental health space uh, within TTRPGs. Um, uh, they're not a sponsor. I wasn't paid to say any of that. I just really believe in what they do. Um, uh, so, yeah, please do... Um, uh, check that out Michelle or somebody remind me um, about that after the game and and I can okay. provide a link in discord or one of our moderators Tamiko is currently in chat if if you're able to find that link Tamiko and can post it in the um, in the discord that would be great um, anyway uh, please do check out those uh, those resources check out that humble bundle uh, with that, I would like to welcome you all to Hell, Michigan. Our current group of children and uh, teens, or teens and an, and an adult, are part of a larger group of teens that were uh, coming from Paradise Academy in Paradise, Michigan. Um, and, uh, they were on a field trip to the Greenfield Village and Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, after about three hours on the road, something caused the engine of their bus to explode and Jake, the bus driver avoided crashing the bus, came to a stop in the parking lot in front of Hell on Wheels Auto Garage, uh, located between the Spirits of Hell Saloon and the Hellhole Diner in Hell, Michigan. Uh, the bus is not going anywhere. A softball-sized spherical object was pulled out of the engine block. Um, and one of your classmates became somehow possessed by an alien named Serafina. Um, and you watched as storm clouds filled the sky in a giant black and red obelisk landed somewhere not too far away uh where you learned from this uh this good alien that um this is an alien bounty hunter called the reaper who is currently searching for them uh and they've asked you to help them escape help them survive um it took you a while but you eventually got on some bikes and started to head uh, outside of the main part of town towards a place called Ells Creek Ranch Campground. Um, en route, you were briefly accosted by the local zealot, a, um, a zealous preacher at the only church in hell, a mm -hmm. tiny church mm -hmm. along the road, um, named uh, Madeline Campbell. Just watch TV. And she... Very uh, adamantly uh, was attempting to to stop all of you, trying to to get a hold of uh, Serafina, but um, you were able to make an escape, pedaling rapidly along the path to Hell's Creek Ranch uh, with 
uh, Ellie Mae leading the charge, flanked by four amazing horses running alongside. Uh, as you came to a stop, out of breath, trying to get the words out to the two uh, ranchers, a middle-aged man and woman, um, wearing matching ranching outfits um, and matching uh, cowboy hats, matching Stetsons. Uh, you had just met Ashton and Dakota Reed. And uh, as the rest of you rode up, Ashton turned to his wife, Dakota, and said, Well, I do believe that there is an animated man. And that's where we're going to pick up as you all come riding up on the reeds at their ranch. What do you do? Anybody? I, I guess Ellie nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ellie Mae's just trying to catch her breath. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like she's, racing. she's like hanging up. Over her handlebars. <laughs> yeah, he's an animated man. What? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. As he says that, uh, Gary comes to a cartoon screech on his bike with like almost tipping right over the handlebars. It's like. It's like. Whew, what a rush. Oh, hey. Well, Ashton kind of takes his stats in and kind of lifts it off his head and repositions it. I'm not exactly a college educated man, but something tells me you're all this got something to do with that. As he kind of throws a thumb over his shoulder, indicating the general direction of where you can see, uh, Less than a uh, half mile away, you can see the top of the black and red obelisk over top of the treetops. Oh, me? I... <laughs> we think it's the Russians. <laughs> but we have learned that if you see the ground breaking, you need to get away from that spot because bad things are coming out of the ground. And, and don't give receipts to people. <laughs> this has not been a good day for us well you and uh dakota steps forward she goes well you all kids look like you've had quite a fright and also i don't recognize any of you you're not from around here are you Nope. No. Nope. We're on a trip. Well, you picked a fine our, our bus day. broke down. You picked a fine day to be passing through hell. <laughs> like, that's for sure. <laughs> I would like... Not Ellie Mae, who's catching her breath. But the rest of you, I would like to make a uh, range check, please. This hmm. is a tiered check, so no failure. I'll find a way. Ooh. Hey. Mm. Oop. I got a two. A two, a three. Fourteen. Fourteen. Wow. 14 what? for Wilson, Greg. Nope. <laughs> I got a, I got There's a no Greg. <laughs> no Greg here. What'd you get, Jimmy? A one? Oof. Yikes, well, dude. So, Wilson, you rolled higher than everyone else combined. So this, Smart. this is a, as I said, a tiered check. In this case, the person who gets the highest notices the thing. The person who gets the lowest might be screwed. Oh boy, Jimmy! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see shit. So this is tracks. this is pretty much right after uh, Jasmine has just said something about it being um, 
you know we've learned that if the ground opens up it's dangerous hmm. only wilson notices the cracks that have formed in the in the dirt uh road the dirt drive right behind jimmy as you see almost like a shadow at first it looks like jimmy's shadow elongating on the ground and then you realize it's that zealous preacher from back on the road is rising up out of the ground behind jimmy and just as you see it wilson it's about to grab him but because you noticed it you have a chance to warn I'm going to warn him as I turn around. How far am I? How far away am I from Jimmy? That's up to you. You guys have all rode in here. It's kind of like a group of kids that just rode in on their bikes. You all just kind of came into a jumbled stop. So, so I, I'm going to turn around and yell. Well, actually, for a quick split second, not not even a split second. I think about Jimmy's a dick, and Jimmy's been a dick to me, <laughs> and I think about. When I want the priest to grab Jimmy, and then in that that half that 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 minuscule second, I go, no, Jimmy will need to be used. So as I turn around and I go, J J J and I I ride and I push my bike, and you know how you do that, you jump off your bike and send your bike flying. We always call that. To send my. We always called that ghosting. Ghosting. So I try to send my bike into the priest as I tell Jimmy duck you dick <laughs> what the fuck did you say <laughs> behind Jimmy, you you dick Jimmy I would like you to make a flight check and Wilson you're going to make a fight check ooh okay oh good and that's going to be 12. Okay. Well, there it is. Okay, here we go. Uh, that'll be a 7. Okay. We got a 12 on flight and a 7 on fight. So, first, uh, we're going to have a um, an attempt to dodge the bicycle. Right in the corner. Oh my gosh! Yes. <laughs> what happened? Oh, three. Okay. It sat on the edge between three and eleven and seven and just slowly rolled over. So Ooh. that's a three. <laughs> um so yeah, you send your bike flying suddenly and it slams into this priest. Now I want to see how they do on their fight attack versus Jimmy's uh what was it, uh eleven or twelve? Twelve. man nice so the bike hits them and you see as it hits them the the zealous preacher's body she sort of splits apart into these <laughs> like shadowy tendrils and absorbs the bike partially and you watch as uh the bike you had wilson for a moment this 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 thing is starting to incorporate these these black vine like tendrils into uh the, the frame of the bike and down into the spokes and you watch as its tendrils seem to be reaching around to the different parts of this bike and not really able to catch any kind of purchase and after just a moment the tendrils quickly recede and it drops the bike to the ground. Make me a brains check. Anybody can make a brains check that, that witnessed this. I got a 14. Oh. You this got is a, a 14? This is another yeah, tier check. Twice. Oh, there you go. Uh, 
Um, so Jimmy and uh, the uh, or sorry, the <laughs> Jimmy and Wilson. Um, Wilson. you kind of notice, especially you, Jimmy, as it's right next to you. Um, it's almost like this thing rejected the bicycle because it's it's made of metal. It's non-organic. What the? And as you sort of almost involuntarily in in avoiding this this attack, Jimmy, you sort of scramble away uh, from it. What's everybody else doing? Is this priest is you have a couple moments as it's uh, trying to disentangle from the bicycle. Uh, yeah, I am definitely removing myself from the area. It will grab what's uh, grab Serafina's hand and start running toward the house. There is no house that you see right uh, here. Horses, I meant. There's house, a, horses, they're spelled slightly different. <laughs> there's a big barn. Um, barn. That's what I meant. They don't have a, they don't live here? What? And I mean, is there they no didn't live here, but there's no there's no homestead visible right here. Uh, okay. Probably uh, further you... up the dirt road. Okay, yeah, so looking for a looking for a pitchfork as I'm going in the barn. So the barn doors are closed. Um, you start making your way that in that direction, though. Uh, what about everybody else? Ah, <gasps> oh, can I? Um, I want to take off in a. <laughs> I was I was about to say in a cartoony fashion, which I feel like is a cop out. <laughs> but I do want to like start pedaling and then just zoom off towards the barn too. I'd love to head for straight for the barn doors and try and just slip in the gap between the two barn doors because I'm 2D right now. Okay, so you're also heading in that direction. Yep. I think Jasmine um, is trying to get off her bike without ripping her skirt anymore. <coughs> and she's cussing and upset about how much her, like, this costed so much and it got ripped on the bus. And I can't believe, I think it's even ripped anymore. And she's trying to pull the rip part to the side. And then she actually suddenly realizes that Jimmy and Serafina are running. And Zach just, I mean, Uncle Gary just <gasps> took off. Zach. <laughs> oh, oh. That's Uncle Gary. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's fine. <laughs> and uh, at which point her eyes will not be cartoon large, but very large for a valley girl and start moving in the direction that everyone else is going. I think Ellie May <clears throat> would kind of like move to grab Wilson and at least get him ahead of her and just be like she's like thrown her bike down gone to Wilson and kind of like just like very gently pushed him forward and been like go and then she will carry she'll be at the back of the pack basically so as everybody starts making a beeline primarily for the barn with Ellie May taking that extra hesitation um, to make sure everybody else is getting away. I want Ellie May to make me a light check. Oh, oh this should be fun. The brass. This should be fun. I have a D8 in that. Oh, Don't be shy about reminding me when I leave dice on your face. <laughs> I just realized That's I left a D20 up there. <gasps> oh, oh, no. Shingle. <sighs> oh, no. So. That's not who I meant left behind to leave behind. We should have left the girl. <laughs> so I'm going to make. Which, which girl? I, I've got to check somebody's stats. Uh, let's see. <laughs> which are. Uh, light the d8 so before you roll that 
Hold on. Flight is physical, right? Yeah, do you have a consequence? I've got the the two hours, oh, so that would be like a negative one. <laughs> you can't go lower than one, thankfully. Thank goodness. Can can we share our adversity tokens to You can Arthur? share your adversity tokens. Will it help with a one? I'm going to I'll tell you what. I'm going to narrate what's about to, part of what's happening to put some context <laughs> to this, and then you decide okay. if and how many you want to give. I have four. There is a ranch hand barreling down the road that runs parallel to the barn, driving very fast and does not look like he's going to stop in time to not hit it, Ellie May. He's already hit the brakes and is sliding, and you can see him starting in slow motion. He's turning the wheel, and it looks like the truck is going to fishtail and just might whip. Oof. Um, and the priest is still there? The priest is also in line about to be smacked by this truck. So currently, Ellie May has a one to attempt to avoid. I'm going to roll the ranch hands flight check to see if he's able to evade hitting. At this rate, unless he rolls a one, he's going to hit. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, no. Hold on. If, if he doesn't meet the DC, he's going to hit uh, Ellie May. You want some points, girl? Oh, we don't know what the DC is, though. I'm not going to tell you either. You've okay. got to take a yeah. stab at it. Yeah. The DC is not relevant to her. He has his own DC. It's not like he has to roll better than one, which is like an obvious... This is a, a weird mix, so... He has to to roll. He's he's sort of rolling something slightly different. Um, but I can all I can tell you is that with a one, Ellie May's gonna get hit by this truck. She's she's hosed. Guys, uh, <laughs> we should use some points. You're really uh, taking a long time to debate whether Ellie or May not... gets run over. So. Listen, I'm fine. I'm fine with being uh, the first girl to die, I guess. <laughs> no, no, well, no. You can, you can have my three. I'm going to throw a two in. Yeah, I'm going to throw two in as well. So you're now up to an eight. Maybe you'll just let him. <laughs> if I throw, can I throw two of my own? Yeah. Cool. I don't even oh. need to. So. No. Nice. Here's how this situation plays out. In slow motion, we see this ranch hand coming up with the truck barreling down. His eyes go wide as the camera zooms into him. And then he. <laughs> Ashton, of course, there's the almost comical crash zoom to Ashton and Dakota going. As they see what's <laughs> unfolding and uh the truck goes into a fishtail and ellie may you push wilson out of the way and you move forward and you feel like you're moving th through molasses as the rear end of this truck it's a uh ford f-150 two-tone it's got this sort of rust brown color with a white down the middle and as it comes around the rear end comes around the hitch misses you by like a fraction of an inch like your kneecaps would have been taken out by this oh. hitch oh. as soon as we see that sort of slow motion everything speed ramps back up and we watch as the truck does a full 180 and the rear end at full speed whips into this corrupted uh, zealot preacher. Cool. Nice. And the body goes flying back about 15 feet 
rolling oh. end over end and coming to a stop in the dust. Wilson just turns back and yells, Ellie May. Like, Ellie, like thinking he was just, as he gets pushed forward, that she's dead. Turns around and he's just looking at her going, Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> can we run? <laughs> was the first example of the Matrix. Yep, first example of the Matrix. Um, you know, with that s sweet, sweet dodging the the freaking trailer hitch um she i imagine she kind of stumbles at first and then she runs up and she just grabs wilson's hand and as long as he allows and yeah. um just starts running with him and i imagine with her being larger um she is going a little bit faster than maybe <laughs> Wilson's keeping up, but the, and there's a small smirk in the side of his mouth because it's kind of the first time a girl has really pulled him in, <laughs> kind of on his hand. So he's kind of oh. in that like, oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is gonna make Jimmy mad. <laughs> you, like, uh... I could die right now. This is fine. Yeah, you. Were you all heading for the barn? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think first, uh, in an almost bizarre display of physics, uh, Gary reaches the door, doesn't even open it, and just sort of turns sideways and slides Slip, through the space the between the, the two in. closed doors. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of you, as you get there, uh, whoever gets there next is able to probably Serafina and and uh jimmy rip open the door and the others come rushing in uh you get into the barn and uh you can see in this barn at the front part here uh there's there's a bunch of hay bales um there's some pitchforks wheelbarrow uh quite a bit of things you would expect to see um in a barn uh and then part way through the barn is an entryway that goes into the stables portion of the barn um there's you know bits of horse tack hanging up um there's a in one corner there's a small uh like blacksmithing area for uh for a furrier uh, farrier not furrier farrier furrier uh, what is that <laughs> farrier uh who takes care of uh if i'm, if I'm remembering correctly shoeing the horses yes. and and all that kind of stuff is this where they film those tiktoks where they are like cleaning horse hooves or whatever listen yeah in about 40 years that's where they're gonna film tiktoks I wow that. i live for that i hate those videos that's insane, insane. i do not want to watch Horse hooves being cleaned. Yellow light. Have you ever watched light. cow hooves being <laughs> Yellow light. Yellow light. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so um, GP. So as you guys okay. r come running into this barn area. I'm trying to think of... I feel like there almost has to be... Uh, Gary will get off his bike and he'll take like one step forward and then step on a rake and get hit in the face with it as you're, you're gonna classic cart cartoon fashion. You're going to cartoon yourself? I didn't mean to, but uh, it's something about this form <laughs> is I'm predisposed <laughs> to it. Yep. Yeah, that and makes sense. I take another step and it happens again. And then I start looking at the floor every time I take steps like, mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's and like I that scene in The around. Simpsons. Whap. <laughs> Whap. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's going to grab a pitch, going to grab a pitchfork and start barring the door. Um. Is everyone in here yet? At this point, I'm yes. But as well, you, I hope so otherwise it'll be it'll be awkward. <laughs> I was gonna say, are we all in as here? you are start you like every man from as you start to close the door and bar it, uh, the reeds, Ashton and Dakota come running as fast as they can with their uh, sixty plus year old bodies, um, and uh, they're like, hold on, hold on. And as they 
Ashton reaches the door and kind of holds it open for his wife. Coming in behind them is the ranch hand. And he is holding in his arms the broken body of the preacher. Oh, mm. gosh. Mm -mm. Leave that outside. No, that's... What? Shut the door. What? Shut the door. What? Shut the door. What? Ashton, yeah, it... don't let... Ashton Gary, is like, holding the door open. You're not coming in with that. And starts You're not coming in with it. that thing. Ashton is holding the door pulling. open. You'll... What were you doing, Gary? Gary starts to grab onto the body and kind of go outside and start pulling it out away from the barn, almost like a tug of war with the ranch hand. Uh, the ranch hand's looking at you and he's like, I don't know what what is it you are trying to do. This is this is a person. I, I, I may have killed Madeline. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Evil. Evil. Wait, like she is possessed right now. You need to put her down and get in here, or you're staying out there with her. Unless you are. If she's like this, where'd that thing go? And pointing at the ranch hand, going, "Where the hell did it go?" If she's like that now, where? It... I don't know if we should let this guy in. Everybody needs to calm down. This is Ashton. Um, like, if you had seen the things we've seen today, you would be just as worked up as us. They cannot come in here. He, he looks very pointedly at Gary. Hmm? I think I've seen and enough. And there's the proof. She, she did this to him. Like, oh my god, you gotta listen. This stuff doesn't happen for no reason. She's possessed. She's dead. Then leave her outside. Like, <laughs> oh my god. I don't know where they, how they do things wherever you kids come from, but we don't leave our dead lying in the streets. No, you bury them. And this isn't a ground, this is not a hole in the ground. This is a barn. Leave her outside. We'll bury her later. Are the keys still in the truck? The truck's like 30 feet away from you. No, I'm at... The keys in the oh, truck? you're asking him? Yeah. Why do you want to know about the keys? Because she stays in the truck. I'm going to need charm rolls here. As whoever. So there's a couple charm rolls that need to happen here. Uh, Ashton Reed's anger is rising. <laughs> and, uh, the ranch hand, um, who, uh, hasn't yet been identified, but I'm going to tell you his name is Jasper Ramirez. Um, Jasper, that's the worst kind. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse the fuck out of me. Nice he, uh, he is... Oh pretty distraught he almost just killed one of you kids and apparently killed preacher um and he yeah he looks like he's a, a, about to have a emotional breakdown um and then a cartoon man starts tugging the dead out of his arms <laughs> so i'm gonna need like three different checks here whoever's trying to yeah. if, if anybody's trying to Calm or otherwise convince Jasper they need to make a charm check. I think Ellie May is going to try and do that. Okay. Is arguing considered? Cons That's not, that would be exacerbating the situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, somebody has to either try to calm down uh, Ashton or uh, physically move him away from the door so you can close the door. And yeah. Gary is trying, going to need a brawn check to try to pull the body away from mm -hmm. Jasper. Yeah, I think Jasmine's too high strung for either of those options. I think... 
there are two ways I could go about this. Because if it's, depending on the role, like if it's a fight role, I, I may be good. But I still want to try and charm him first and basically just tell him the truth. It's like farm ha farmer to farmer. She wants to tell him the truth and be like, listen, we cannot risk this happening. And she, I mean, she'll be pointing to Poppy, who is now Serafina and trying to explain the situation. And she'll point at Wilson and talk about the uh, no, because she has does she have the orb still. Wilson had it. I thought so too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she'll point at Wilson and she'll talk about this, you know, this orb and stuff, and then she'll explain everything that's happened and with that preacher lady and with so the crazy lady and blah. Make the charm check to see if you get to do all that. <laughs> I have a question. How come yeah. everyone in the chat keeps saying that there's something bad about Barnes? Yeah. <laughs> What's the deal with that? And he laughs. You hear he the laugh? Don't no laugh. Hey, hold on. Hold on. I asked well, an honest Nico question. Well, and Chad were right. <laughs> Listen. I, will say, I, I will say this. When you turn over to Wilson, Wilson's not there. You don't see Wilson right away because Wilson is in the back of the barn going into the stalls, putting something together. Well, we'll see about that because there's, <laughs> there's, 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 Things that may or may not happen in your attempt to get to the back. I of the feel barn. like this is one of those ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, you can yeah. say the magic uh, word. Uh, moments. I got a nine. On my a charm. nine on a charm check. Nine sounds good. Okay, so simultaneously, Gary is trying to rest. Uh, so for Gary, this is going to be a opposed. Roll the fourteen. Um my brawn brawn check and i've got to find jasper's brawn <laughs> jasper has a d20 brawn me too you rolled a 14 i'm gonna be shutting the door mm -hmm. oh come on man <laughs> well, wow uh, so what do you get for guys it's a stalemate roll off? it's a stalemate it's a stalemate uh uh i'm gonna start shutting the door so you're gonna they're pulling you're gonna have to make a brawn check versus ashton Okay. Just let me check it. Uh, oh, yeah, he won. What are you rolling? <laughs> I got a three. What'd you roll? Oh, I got a four, actually. What dice did you roll? My die four. I got a D, uh, D4 plus. <laughs> you rolled a two. Oh, yeah! yeah! He rolled a two that. on a D20. Hell yeah. He just got... Uh, beat by a kid. So, so as you sort of <laughs> Gary, push, you are outside. <laughs> as you as you push you one of your in. your potential allies out the door of his own barn, <laughs> you now have Gary, who is also outside the barn. Gary can get back in. Ellie May, who's pissed, like extremely pissed off now, and I mean. She Horses. is so very close to punching Jimmy. <laughs> here's here's how this happens because Ellie May, you succeeded in your charm check. Oh, whoops. <laughs> um sorry. Which you are managing to successfully calm um Jasper down. Since it was a stalemate, um Gary. He's not super fighting against you. Um, you do get a surge of inspiration as Tomiko has just gifted five subs to the community, awarding you all five more domain pops. So you're at oh, six Tomiko pops. Again. Awesome. To me. Thank you, Tomiko. Um, Thanks, Tomiko. <clears throat> now I can use all the emojis. <laughs> and, uh... <clears throat> um... Gary... You notice in this moment part of the reason why it's a stalemate is these black vines that are sort of entwining all over this preacher's body oh. they are starting to slough off as you are pulling against it and they become very brittle and almost like ash as you're pulling oh. you realize 
whatever this entity was that was controlling this creature with her body dead it has no living thing to control and these vines are sort of breaking free you also notice as the last of these sort of fall away and all that's left is the the broken body of this this dead woman you do see one tendril that looks like it's living that unwraps from her dangling leg untwists and down into a crack in the ground and as it does think... so it just kind of goes oh. i think gary oh. sees that and his his complexion he, basically it's like the color draining like literally straight down over his whole drawing it goes black and white for a moment as the color drains from his face and he's like Gulp. and he lets go and i imagine this leads to both him and uh what's the name of the ranch jasper hand? jasper um <laughs> like falling back in opposite directions there's a cartoon like Blah! as he hits that lands on the ground jasper sort of drops to his knees holding this body and he just kind of looks up at Ashton who sort of stumbles away from the door as Jimmy's preparing to close it. And Jasper just goes, I, I, I didn't, I didn't mean to kill her. Dude. It was an accident. I, and I didn't mean to almost run into you. Like, it's not your fault. She was possessed. You didn't have any control over that. I, I was in such a hurry. I was trying to get here in time to warn everybody. Where that ship landed at the back of the property, it it landed in the lake. And that's what's causing the problems. You didn't do it. But it's coming. What do you, what do you oh. mean it's coming? I saw it. Is it moving? Something came out of that giant obelisk in the water. And then it landed in the water, and I saw the ripples coming to the shore. I jumped in the truck, and before I took off, something big, bigger than even the horses, but it had like six legs. What? It was moving in this direction. What? Oh, boy. Okay, I think we should move in that and then and point away from here <laughs> well but she has to recharge like her round thingy so she are the keys leave. in the truck you keep asking about the keys in the truck the keys are in the truck why would i take them out let's take the truck we can outrun it at least where are you going to go to did you not see the force field Well, we have to get away from the thing that is in the lake. Like, it's I thought not we had to get to good. the thing in the lake. I don't... Well, the thing in the lake, but not like the thing that came out of oh, it. Oh, the, the thing, lake. but not the thing. That thing. You don't yeah. understand. It is... Gotcha. It is going to be here very soon. Like, what how soon? It? We what need to it hide. Look like? Six legs is all I needed to hear. Bigger than the what horse. What did it look like? Six it's legs. Six legs? bigger this is somehow gary's becoming more black and white i don't I know how my... that works but he's clearly getting more like like there's beads of sweat dripping like it looks like he just got rained on um he looks very nervous to add to your nerves that's when you hear while this was happening after ashton got shoved out the door by jimmy he walked over to the truck and you all hear as uh, oh. a shotgun is Shit. fired into the air. Oh, he's everybody mad. needs to calm down. Get in Fire. the barn. Come. Get into the barn, and he's not. He's holding the gun up. I'm prepared to defend to defend all of us. Is everybody getting in the barn? 
right for it. What? I I piowed right for it. For what? The barn or the? Yeah, the barn. Okay. I thought you were gonna make a play for the shotgun. I'm like, this is not very Gary. <laughs> no. <laughs> no way, um, dude. Make peace. As I'll this wait. scene is happening, and and Ashton is walking slowly and purposefully, and kind of reaching a hand out to guide his wife past Jimmy and into the barn. The camera's going to keep moving, and we're going to catch up to Wilson. Now, Wilson, I'm going to, before you go off on what you thought you were going to do, I'm going to give you something that you saw that may change what you were going to do. As you move to the back part of the barn, you notice that to the right-hand side, in the sort of in the middle is where the door goes back to um, where the stables are. But you notice off to the right-hand side, there is a door that has a padlock on it. And this door has odd symbols that have been burned into the door. I'm going to go on a limb here and say that uh, Wilson's probably pretty familiar with like Star Wars or Predator and probably more so Predator. Uh, this looks very much like the symbols that the Predator had. Not exactly, but in the style of the symbols that the Predator had um, on its uh, wrist device. This looks like alien language of some kind. So what are you doing upon seeing this? You're muted. You're muted. Okay. Okay. Aha. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I, I note that real quick and then I continue to do what I'm wanting to do is putting gloves on and searching the stables for poop, dung, horse crap, whatever I can, you know, whatever the fresher, the better. I'm not going to make you roll for this because you're in a literal horse stable. So you're able to, and this is what I love about role-playing games because you get to say things like this. Without rolling, you will successfully find a large quantity of horseshit. Excellent. <laughs> nice. I, I make, I, I make, if I can make two or three little, like, almost uh, baseball size, uh, you know, size dung, and I stick the M80 inside and kind of cover it up so only the wick is standing, is, is out. I know this is going to take a few minutes, but I'm making poop bombs. Okay. This is only a twelve-year-old would do. <laughs> so let 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 let's have you. <laughs> Jake is dumbfounded. You let's, broke him. Just, this this threw me. I was not expecting I'm anything make some along poop this line. Bombs. I'm making poop um, bombs. It figures that the little kid, the littlest of the kids, is I'm the one that's in the back that playing door like poop. I was gonna. Why don't we, what's, um, the, what's the role of the poop in this? Can't you just make bombs? Yes, but Wilson knows that because of earlier, that black thing only takes organic things. Oh. So he's so you organic. Want to make a poop monster? You're gonna fill it with poop. I'm gonna. It's gonna absorb the poop and then explode with an M80 because otherwise it won't absorb it. Okay, so first I want you to make a brains check. Okay. <laughs> We're not sure about that right now. What is your brains die? D20? A D20. Oh, well. Ooh, that's only an 11. Uh, okay, that's good enough. You, yeah, you're able to successfully make the three poop bombs that you wanted. So add... Three horse poop bombs to your inventory. I... 
<laughs> Something Jake did I'm, not realize he was going to be saying. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to give you an adversity token as like a point of inspiration for that because <laughs> that just completely caught me off guard. It's such out of the box thinking. Well, I mean, he's a 12 year old yeah. kid and he's a MacGyver, of course, and he's learned the fact that this thing doesn't take only oh, takes organic. Sense. And he's in a stable, and the first thing he's thinking is, "What's organic?" Oop! There we go. You so know? as as everybody comes into the barn, and uh, Jimmy bars the door, you all turn around just as Wilson is got three of these horse turd bombs with M80 wicks sticking out of them, and is just sort of peeling off his uh, latex gloves. Jimmy, you'd look up to see everybody just staring at you. And I just imagine Gary is very comically going, blink, blink. <laughs> uh, Gary is uh, kind of really like, he's got, he's like jittering. He's like biting his nails and they're like flying off in every direction comically, <laughs> of course. Um, you can see he's a nervous wreck after uh, mention of this strange beast. Bigger than a horse with six legs. Ellie Mae, you hear through the open door to the back. And, and I will say the rest of you spot this locked door with these strange alien symbols burned into oh, it. Um... But Ellie May, you hear from the direction of the stables. You you hear the uh, nervous pawing at the floor and nervous whinnies of several horses in the stable. Like the way an animal would react if a predator is approaching. Um, uh, uh. Guys, we uh, we 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 need to 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 go, preferably out that way. And she actually points to the door that they all came in it at. Um, and I think what she's gonna do is she's oh, actually going to throwing shit. Nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody caught that, Craig. I I'm not really sure what you said. You cut in. I think we got. I start throwing shit, which. Yeah. I don't know if. All I, right, am I there? Yeah. Yes, now you are. No. He rolled the turned into a robot mm -hmm. die. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, we're only catching every every uh, fifth third. word there, Craig. While Craig is uh like <laughs> there. This is Hastings Wi Fi for you. Somehow. You uh, hear me or no? Yeah, if you say can you hear me, we can hear you, but when you start talking we lose you. Okay, well I, what I was saying is I just finished barring the door and then she says that and then I go, There, I'm done. <laughs> and then she says that, and I start immediately moving everything that I just put there. <laughs> wait, as, guys, as, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. First off, first off, like, if this thing is giant, we're just sitting in this barn waiting for it to come get us. We have to keep moving. That's the why. Truck. That's why I want to get the horses. The horses are going to lead us away from the thing. Okay, and and did anybody else notice the 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 door with the burnt stuff on it? Like, are these people aliens too? You you see that Serafina has walked over to the door and is tracing her fingers across the symbols, and she kind of looks back at everybody and then looks over at the reeds and at Jasper. And Jasper, the reeds look at Jasper, and Jasper says, Those were not there this morning. Oh. 
Yeah, what's up, Jasper? I would like anybody who would like to take a moment to investigate the alien symbols. I would. To make a brains check. Let's see what my brains Yeah, are. um... And Ellie Mae's not going to do that. She's going to start unlocking or trying to get all of the paddocks open to... So, to do that, you have to go back into the stables, which is twice as large as the main part of the barn you were in. Mm-hmm. Got a nine. Is it just Gary and and Jasmine that are investigating the symbols? Yeah, I'm just uh, kind of prepping. Me, I'm not uh, investigating anything. I am too scared. Oh, is that a fourteen from before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the older roll. Okay. Uh, do you want to use any uh, adversity tokens? I still have two left, so I will use both of them. Hold on, I'll I'll give you two. Okay. Hey. That pushes you to an eleven, and that is enough now for you oh, to you. kind of make sense of these alien symbols. It's you realize that this language is almost like a um it's almost like a puzzle. And um that if you trace your fingers through the symbols in a certain order, they start to light up. And so it's kind of like you're, you're tracing the symbols and one lights up. And when you touch another one, they both go dark. But if you move in a certain order and the symbols seem to move in a way that almost lit. indicates, it's like a weird sort of alien cursive that indicates a, a direction. And as you do so, the door doesn't unlock. The door vanishes. The door, the oh. lock, it just, like it was an illusion. What? And behind okay. this door, you see now that the real door is lying in broken pieces, partially in this little, uh, like, barn closet area. And sitting inside there is, it looks like a, I'm trying to think how to describe it. It looks like about a, a two foot tall black and red obelisk that has three smaller versions of the obelisk that come off it at an angle that create like tripod legs for this thing to sit up. The whole thing is only about two feet tall. It's a piece of alien tech and it is pulsing in uh, the red lights are pulsing in a rhythm and as Serafina takes a step closer, the pulsing increases. Uh, like, what's that doing in here, guys? And that's when you hear... As something heavy lands on the roof of the barn. Oh, Dust my stomach drops falls down put it put it back in your ear in, dust falls down into the barn and you hear the creaking of the roof and the rafters as something very large begins to move across the top of the barn I start folding myself up into a little cube <laughs> <laughs> no somebody carry me Um, do you guys, who has, who, Wilson, like, do you have the ball thing? Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. Does, is like, the, is that a charger? You, maybe? It maybe? Is, it is not. Sophia? It's, it's just not the charger. It? Do you know what it is, Serafina? I need a moment. I need, can somebody help me decipher this technology? And she's talking very quietly. You should all hide. And she kind of... Uh, 
she indicates the hay bales and stuff all around. I need somebody to help me. Greg, you are muted. Covering hay over myself. Anybody who is going to hide, I need to make a flight check. Anybody, or who, I should say, is going to try to help Serafina with the... I will try to help her since I figured out the language. Okay. So you are going to get a plus two on your check because you figured out the language in the previous portion. I need you to make a brains check. Brains check. Let me I need, let me check what my brains are again. I need everybody else. Brains are D10. I need everybody else to make flight checks if you're trying to hide. Um... I got an eight plus two, so ten. Okay, so. Oh, good. It's a terrible at hiding. Is there a bonus for being paper? <laughs> um, I, I, I gotta say that your your current predicament is a uh is a negative um in this situation because a cartoon stands out like a sore thumb in this very realistic environment mm -hmm. um was he actually able to fold himself up into a square or cube if probably you, not with a three <laughs> if you no, i was gonna say with a three probably not you can certainly okay. attempt um <laughs> i'm gonna i'll grab that paper and put it in my pocket Hey, that's um, I was hoping. I bet so you as were. it stands right now, I'll take this. We've 16. got Ellie Mae with a five, Gary with a three, Wilson with a three. Um, Jimmy's the only one who you all look around, and you don't see him. Um, Where'd Jimmy go? Jasmine and Serafina are looking at this object and Jasmine <clears throat> Serafina looks at you and says I know what this is. I don't know why she talks like that. She's talking like uh, <laughs> Jasper Ramirez now. I know what this is. I, I know what this is. What is it? I think this is why he's coming here. Must have... You mute? You, I think we can get that line. I think this must be why he is coming here. Oh, great. It must... Maybe he dropped it on purpose when he was landing. It is... Like this... it's something he needs to have? You think? This device... If you do this... And she starts pointing to different things, showing you how to how to activate it. This is part of a tracking system. Oh, then can we break it? We can use it against him. He has the other part of the tracking system. We do this, this, and this, and then you hold it like this. <laughs> you have to wait until we see him. Pointed at him. Oh! oh. I thought that was Savannah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> my only opportunity to show it's, you. It's very appropriate that a kitten shows up this in the barn. It's a barn cat. <laughs> it's a barn, barn kitty. Yeah. They're going to help fuck that's, that's one of those things that, that, that happens. The barn kittens show up right before the alien monster shows up. Oh, no. Get ready for bats? As, uh, as uh, Serafina is oh. showing you, Jasmine, how to work this, she says... You do this, this, and this. When he shows up, point it at him. And it should overload no. his no, tracking back, technology. Back, 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 then we can okay. make our escape. I can show me one more time so so this, so that I get it right. She sh you got it. With your role, you understand okay. it. She shows you okay. how to do it. It's basically you're going to... you're The way when you pick it up, the legs sort of act almost like a bracing system. And you're kind of going to hold it like a very large weapon but it's not as heavy as you expect the others are attempting to hide and they're not doing a great job 
Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually going to see... Uh, we were looking at flight, so... Um, it reads... Oh, let's see. Oh, I rolled the wrong die. I, I missed the L and I rolled my fight die, so I probably would have got worse. Because it's small. So Ashton gets a five. And Dakota gets an explosion. Oh. A seven. Dakota is able to successfully hide. And Jasper. Jasper is not able to successfully hide. So, uh, what was your He's... new roll, Zach? Uh, well, I didn't re-roll, but I will if you, right Well, now. if you rolled the wrong die, you definitely re-roll. It's a five now. You are still not hidden. Uh, six now. As <laughs> you begin, you can still hear this creaking sound. And you hear the sound of... of stepping but there's too many feet no and just as jasmine gets this device and all of a sudden you see this valley girl turn around holding this piece of alien technology looking like uh rambo holding an m60 machine gun <laughs> the that's an amazing image the roof of the barn implodes as a massive form <laughs> falls down from the roof and lands in your midst and you see what can only be described as mostly scorpion oh. but with a vaguely humanoid upper torso that does not look anything like the rock in the scorpion the King. Ro I was going to oh, say I is it that. the rock it does not look like the rock in the scorpion King. but it's you can also see that there are pieces of metallic armor on it and every piece of armor has that same obsidian black look to it with red lighting across it and it is holding in one of two sets of arms it is holding a device that has a red light that is going <laughs> pointing right at Serafina. Serafina looks at you, Jasmine, and says, Now! Jasmine? And I would aim towards it as best I could, going, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I need you, because of your success, there is a very high probability that this is going to work. There is a 75% chance that this works. I'm going to need you to roll a D100. Okie dokie, artichokey. Then I will roll mine. Oh my fucking god. I rolled a two. The number doesn't matter because when I roll my number, if you are within 37 of either side of this number, then it happens. Number I rolled was almost an eight. Uh, Is that exactly 30 or no? That's 47. 37 oh, no. plus 2 is 39. You oh. are 10 away oh, from it happening. Oh, no. As you press the button and the the vice you are holding goes and it sounds like the Millennium Falcon Failing to hit hyperspace. So we're not going to plaid. And that's where we're going to take a break. 
Oh. On a failure. That's a great break. Well, <laughs> I, you know, gotta cry. <laughs> I think you get an adversity um, token though, right? Uh Yes, you do get an adversity okay. token. Because okay. while it wasn't a traditional skill check, it was a failure at a skill. Uh, and those do earn adversity tokens. So I think you guys are up to... Well, no, this isn't a group one. Uh, as a group, you have six adversity tokens. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. With that, we are going to take a break. And we'll see what happens when we come back in about ten minutes. Jasmine's we'll see you gonna die. on the other side. <laughs> no! And we're back. The scorpion-like armored and armed alien has just dropped in your midst. Jasmine has attempted to fire this alien technology at it, and it has failed. What would you all like to do? Throw poop bomb! <laughs> bomb! Number two bombs away! Um, okay, so I will say that, so the way this kind of stuff works in Kids on Bikes is you're, it's not like D&D &D where you roll for an attack. The roll is going to determine the narrative results of the, of the, of the scene. So in this case, do you want to throw... Well, before we say what you do, we know what you want to do. You're going to mm -hmm. have to make a fight check. And it's going to be versus its brawn. Uh, because it's so big, as these bombs hit it, we're just going to, it's going to see if brute force, if it's able to withstand them. So it's not a, like, per bomb. It's just yeah. going to be overall... Uh, so Wilson is getting ready to throw poop bombs, lighting them and tossing them. What's everybody else doing? Is it within the realm of possibility that Jasmine can look at the thing and see if she broke it or if she could try again and, and get it right with the right order? You can make another brains check. Straight up, no, uh, no bonus to it. See if you can figure it out. So you're going to make a brains check. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to keep looking at what my brains are. And ten. So what's what's uh, what's everybody else doing? Gary, Ellie Mae. I Jimmy. think Gary, when this creature uh, crashes into the barn, there is a courage the cowardly dog scream, <laughs> in which his <laughs> eyes come out of his head, and then fueled by fear. He begins to dart around the room, bouncing off of the walls like, ah, somebody, somebody, get me out of here, get me out of here, screaming the whole time. And I think that because of uh, the cartoon physics intersecting with the real world physics, this may start to cause severe structural damage to the remainder of the barn. Um, maybe. And so you will be making a flight check. Uh-huh can do ellie may um ellie may is going to look for the nearest um like pitchfork um pickaxe axe hatchet something okay that she can hit this thing with perfect so you're looking for farm implements jimmy what are you doing uh i am reaching out of the hay to uh grab a pitchfork and as soon as it turns its back i'm going jimmy With i'm gonna say pitchfork. that i'm gonna say pitchfork fucking lance you're gonna you're gonna make a fight check and i'm gonna give you a plus two i'm gonna give you a plus three because you rolled so high on your stealth you are straight up like predator in predator when uh when he covered himself in mud to defeat the predator's heat vision you're covered in hay and you are right below this thing. So you'll be able to get a <laughs> shot at it from under. So I Hell need yeah. everybody to make their checks. Gary, you roll the four for your flight. Four. 
We got a four for brains for Jasmine. She's crossing streams, like they said in chat. 19 fight for Ellie Don't May. Don't cross your streams. <laughs> Did... Wilson, you're making a fight check. Okay, a fight check. Now, you had said because of this ingenious um, make it, I, an adversity token? No, is that just uh, that's put into the group? or do no, I have, it's like, yours. Advantage. Yes. It's yours. It's not advantage. Oh. Adversity okay. tokens are plus one per token. Got it. Got it. So you can add to your rolls. I think what we have three? six as a group now, too. You also have six as a group. So you can choose to use them to boost anybody's roll, or you can spend five for somebody to roll on the D100 table. Because that um, worked out great. <laughs> uh, Jake, out I got... What did you say? I had a plus what? Plus three. All right, so I ended up with I had thirteen on my own, so sixteen. Sixteen. Wow. That sounds pretty good. So I think I've got all of your results. So there is a table in uh, in Kids on Bikes that is a narrative results that. In this edition, for some reason, I don't have it. Uh, I don't have it marked. So give me one second. Of course. Where did my narrative? Oh. Ah. No. Yeah. Here we go. Guidelines for failure or success. Um. So Wilson. Yes. You got a you missed it by four. The character fails, but not too badly. There might be some very, very minor short term consequences, but these won't shift the story more than a minute or two. Um, you've tried and almost succeeded. Um, so your bombs are ineffective. So as I tell you all what's happening, you're going to then be able to narrate how you failed with your bomb. In fact, we'll sort of story build with everybody's success or failure. So Wilson, how is it that when you throw these poop bombs, what happens that they, they end up not harming this creature? So the first one kind of gets thrown at it and it hits one of the pieces of um, armor that it has and kind of splats and the the M80 kind of falls out and just explodes next to it. The second bomb I lit and threw it too quickly. And so it just basically, it wasn't compacted well enough and it kind of broke apart a little bit and bounced off and then fell to the ground and exploded. Um, so basically it's not doing a lot of damage. And then the third one, as I throw it, freaking Craig in his animated freaking cowardly dog running around bounced off of one of them and made it bounce off its arm. It kind of nicked it for a second as it's going all over the place. And um, it goes to the side and just it explodes next to it, next to this creature. Yeah, I think there's also an element of as Gary's cartoon bouncing around here, he's almost getting blown up by these things, uh, which is part of how he's being uh, sort of adding to his uh, uh, freak out bouncing around the barn. Gary, you missed the DC by six. That can't be right. The failure is bad, but not a disaster. <laughs> There will be some short-term consequences that might lead to some immediate difficulties, but nothing that the character can't handle if they focus on them. You have tried to do or has been forced to do something beyond their capabilities, and not surprisingly, they've failed. Um, with this failure, what happens to you that kind of gives you a setback? You end up, from all your bouncing around, you crash into the uh, small blacksmith area and... As you hit the ground and with enough force that the uh, anvil is kind of mount sitting up on top of this 
thick oak tree stump. The anvil sort of goes whoop, 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 and then teeters and drops. It hits a rake that is next to a bucket of water <laughs> that the the hot horseshoes are dipped into, and the bucket of water splashes on your legs. No! And the My paper, the ink, and paint that makes up your body begins to run. Gary, you have a physical consequence, minus two, uh, until you can either have legs redrawn or your cartoon effect ends. Um, so let's see. So that was the flight. Uh, unfortunately, Jasmine, you are not able to you also failed by six yeah that's a bad roll one of the sets of arms that's holding this thing that's pointing right at seraphina who has moved behind you it reaches out Oops. with its other set of arms and it yanks this piece of technology away from you and in the process of doing so, you get basically knocked backwards on your butt. Um, no. I need... I get a quick question. Yeah. As for the spending five... Um, what are they called? Adversity tokens. Um, can we make you roll on the table? Nobody's ever done that. Part of that is because <laughs> the... The effects that are on the roll table are designed to affect player characters. I see. Because uh, some of them are negative, some of them are positives, and some of them are sort of elements that unfold within the story. Mm -hmm. um, and because of the real monetary value of the D100 table, I would not like them to be wasted on me. Interesting. Uh, the audience, specifically Tomiko, has provided those to you for your use. I guess Tomiko would have to weigh in on that. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, ultimately, yeah, it could somehow affect the... I was just like, I wonder if we can make something I'm, I'm, crazy happen I'm not going to tell you what happened, creature. but I'm going to roll. I've rolled. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to see like how this would... <laughs> Yeah, this would is. You have to pick an NPC, or are you doing this against the? Game oh no, master? this would. Well, I guess yeah. You you could point it at whoever you wanted to, but um. Uh. Yeah, Tomiko says she thinks it's a great idea, but I'm right. It wouldn't really benefit or being the GM. In this case, what I rolled would actually hurt you guys. Um, and I would what rather we gotta know. that not happen. Well, I can't tell you because it would reveal something on the table. Mm. Nice try. And we might roll it. Okay. So <laughs> there's something about to unfold here, though. A quick series of events because we haven't gotten to Jimmy yeah. and, uh, oh, yeah. and Ellie Mae's successes. Do you want me to react to what happened? Yeah. So, yeah, this thing has knocked you back on your rear end taking the tech away from you as Seraphina backs away. What do you do? Oof. Well, I think her initially, when she pulled that thing out, she was like ready to kill this thing. She didn't know exactly what was going to happen. And when it started to build up, her adrenaline's building up and she's getting really excited feeling like, oh my God, I'm actually going to do something right. My dad's going to be so proud of me. And then it messed. And then now the second one, she's like, oh my God, she's shaking. She's freaking out. She doesn't get it right, obviously. Misses the guy. And now she's standing here looking at the weapon, looking up at this monster, for a, you know, lack of a better word, with big giant doe eyes. It yanks it out of her hands. She falls backwards and she's like starting to cry. But she looks up at Serafina, who probably, I would assume, is looking even more frightened than she is. And then, Je well, go ahead. You were going to say something? Go ahead. Okay. That she would quickly turn around and stand up 
and ask tell Serafina she's so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like I really thought I could do this to help you. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do now. Serafina, when you look up at her, you see that Serafina looks like Poppy. She's this red haired, freckled girl with overalls with these two uh braids. But for a moment you see this ripple and you see an almost reptilian um a, if it could be considered kind uh i would say almost uh like a, a big eyed turtle like um alien uh face that just for a moment you get a a, a glimpse of seraphina's true form yeah and she does look very frightened and then the alien creature takes its of its six legs that end in these hard shelled spiky feet it raises two of them up and brings them down to come down on top of you oh. and suddenly you're on the other side of the barn over by the door as Serafina oh, has just teleported you out of there. Oh, heck yeah. So, Sarah, you, I, I will tell you right now, Sarah, that um, I actually need to roll for for uh, a brawn for both you and... Um, but you have a very high chance of success, uh, Ellie Mae. But first, oh, heard that before. we're going to see how... <laughs> Uh, one, uh, we've got a 13, what was a 16 out of, um, Jimmy versus a six brawn, which means you succeed by 10 or more. You succeed smoothly and easily. Likely it looks like you you're just showing off or that this is done so readily that it happens without any effort at all. Um, there classic could be Jimmy, unfortunately. Some it is unex- classic Jimmy. There could be some unexpected positive consequences as a result of this. Unfortunately, Tomiko has intervened on what those consequences will be because Tomiko has donated five more subs and declared that Craig specifically will roll a D100 on the <gasps> table. Yes! <laughs> Join me and in Cartoon Land! Come for, on! For the audience's... Uh, just uh edification when i figure out how to do it i am toying with the idea of making that an audience option using bits to Ooh. buy a role for a specific character during a game to roll on the d100 table it won't like be cheap do in the charity games but uh well we don't use those in the charity game because it's a completely different thing um Todd has his own stuff that he uses for that. But definitely, if I can incorporate it in that way, we will. So, before we determine the effects of your attack, let's get that D100 roll there, Craig. Uh, that on, would be crazy. a 57 on my My Little Pony dice. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You have rolled... Number f- oh okay I read the wrong one. You have rolled something's off. You ever just have one of those days? Well, this is one of those days. Tamiko. The next time you roll the maximum value on your grit die, it does not explode. Oh, okay. That is poopy. That could be the matter of life and death. So you are non. Messed up, Tamiko. Messed up. Explosive. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Star Trek for the win. (laughs) Tamiko cackles wildly and runs away. I believe it. (laughs) So you did, however, succeed on your attack with a 16 very very handily so what does this look like as you spring out of the hay and stab this thing in the underside with a pitchfork he's gonna it's gonna look like uh the 
movie Rambo where he comes out of the mud. Yeah. And, uh, jabs this, uh, jabs the pitchfork deep, deep into the underbelly of the soft underbelly of the scorpion. Driving it, twisting. Oh, yeah, got a twist. As you do that, just like in first blood. Oh, and then I put the, put the, uh, uh, the bottom of the pitchfork into the ground so if it moves it just does more mm. and gonna, then I run out underneath it. it I'm going to take that one step further this is the GM's discretion boon as Ooh. Serafina watching everything unfold she quickly kind of she had just you see where she sort of made a pushing motion and teleported Jasmine across the barn saving her as you jam this thing up and then you sort of brace the pitchfork, she points a hand at you and you feel this surge of strength and you almost involuntarily, as you jab the, like brace the pitchfork, you grab hold of this thing's body and with a super strength, you pull it down causing the pitchfork to go even further up into that humanoid chest from below. And this sort of black ichor is starting to spill out across you as you quickly duck out from underneath it. I, I'm going to I'm gonna try to uh, grab the piece of equipment uh, as I leave. Excellent. Yeah, with, with that much of a success, you're able to snatch that up. And now we're going to... Ellie May. Now that 19 is a really good roll, but we've got to see what the brawn is on. And I'm going to give him, because of what just happened, a minus three on his roll. Nice. Making that a nine. So you beat him by 10. That's also a uh, Ah, succeeds smoothly and easily. (laughs) Get, Get off me. What is happening? Breathe. The die. die on me. <laughs> oh. die. Ah. Come on. It's also a jack die. See, when I'm looking when I'm looking at <laughs> the zoom window, I just see you flailing around like a fool. <laughs> Cuz I'm not looking over here. Well, that's normal. I, yeah. I was like, what is there a bee in there? That's, I had no I idea. The other For all I knew his sister was standing behind him pestering him. <laughs> um, she would so sarah ellie may succeeds quite handily at this action and i'm gonna give you a little seraphina boost at the end okay so she's actually gonna take like it's a barn so i'm i'm assuming there's probably like a wood chopping axe maybe here they have like a wood stove that yeah absolutely that they have to have so she grabs this wood chopping axe and uh with her uh her one rank of tank <laughs> she uh it says you're big but there's also obviously the minus one because you're clumsy but right now i imagine that you know with her being big she's able to just kind of very much like a baseball uh player when they rear back and hit that ball and hit a home run she is reeling back and hitting this thing if with jimmy having pulled the body down i'm assuming that maybe this humanoid body is a little bit closer and she could at least get it like in the side or in like the quote-unquote belly yeah absolutely and in fact if you wanted to because you were starting to head towards the stables it's almost like you're behind it Jimmy pulled it down. You could basically now run up its back. Oh, hell yes. And as you bring the axe back, Serafina throws her other hand towards you. And this red light, all of a sudden the axe, it starts at your hands, start glowing with red energy that just goes and up to the head of the axe, which just goes almost anime style. Shing. And you have an energy imbued axe as you swing oh. it at this this alien. I basically have a lightsaber. More or less. Through like butter. 
Hell yeah. You swing the axe baseball player style and you cleave this thing's head right off. Oh, Rosie. Would the head so goes flying up into the rafters where you guys see it strike something you didn't see before about the size of a large bird there is a black and red drone that is hovering just in it like it had just come down through the hole and was watching the whole thing this head flies up and smashes into it and knocks this drone and it slams into the rafters and now picture more or less a drone like we know them today but in 1985 we had no idea what a what a drone like that was and it just goes and small explosion and as the debris clears and you're standing there and the red light vanishes from the axe and the body of this creature is starting to fall to the side you see the drone or you see through the hole in the ceiling there was a second drone that was just starting to come down in and it the red lights go bling 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 and you see a almost like a flash like a photo being taken and then this drone goes and flies away as the body you are standing on begins to quickly turn black like those uh, vines on the preacher did and the entire body starts to crumble like ash very quickly in upon itself I think Ellie Mae is going to do like a somersault roll off this thing before she falls and hurts herself some more so, yes, Jimmy. Does does this thing have the other portion of the technology? What do you mean the other portion of the technology? Remember, she said you said that she was pointing it at something else. She was pointing it at was the there, creature. Was there two pieces or no? The creature had a piece of technology. All yes, I'm. We want. I want to. I want to try to get that piece too. I, Everything that was on the creature is turning into that black ash. It's armor, any technology it had, even the pieces of the drone that have fallen are turning to the black ash. What about the one Jasmine had? The one Jasmine had is not. Is this still in my arms? No, that's the one that Jimmy picked up. Okay. So Jimmy has the one that you tried to use and failed. Jimmy, you have a piece of tech now. That is, you can just mark it as alien tech um, and put in parentheses weapon or sorry, question mark weapon. Um, and uh, as this happens, you see Ashton is kind of protectively standing in front of Jasper and Dakota, and he's got the shotgun pointed at where this thing is. Or was, and he's very shaky with it. And he's he just kind of looks over at all of you just in, in amazement. Um, I don't know who you kids are. I don't know where you came from. But if we have any hope of getting away from this thing, I think it's in you kids. We come from Paradise Academy. So far. You mentioned, somebody mentioned something about needing to get to that thing's ship. Yeah. He kind of looks over at Dakota and she just kind of nods at him. He goes, come with me. And uh, he motions to all of you to follow him. And he, he goes to open the barn. And he, uh, well, Gary, you're going to be limping along um, as your legs are very, um, well, your lower half looks kind of smeared, like like somebody spilled water on a drawing on, uh, like, a, like, like your, a, your, you as a drawing is on somebody's desk and they knocked over a cup of water. So your lower half is sort of smeared and runny. Um, but they, they lead you over, uh, a couple hundred yards away from the barn 
in between a couple of other buildings and there's what looks like a pump house and Ashton opens up the the door and inside this pump house there's a um, in the floor there's a green metal trap door and uh, it's got a brass handle on it that he turns and he goes kind of has to force it and then he lifts it up and he says this is a service tunnel that leads for for the pumps to the lake it'll get you close to the lake it won't get you all the way into the lake but it'll get you to another pump house you can move underground undetected when you get out there I gotta let you know you might run into a couple people hopefully they're still out there Nathan Wood has a cabin on the edge of the lake he's a good guy he's a hunter and a fisherman he's a retired Livingston County Sheriff keeps to himself out there but he's got a boat. Oh. The other person, unfortunately, that lives out in that area, he kind of rolls his eyes. It's Cam Alexander. He's what you'd call, well, he's a nut job. Although, he kind of looks back at the barn, maybe not so much. Guy claims, been claiming for years that he regularly gets abducted by aliens. He lives in an RV out there, and he's got a he's got a pirate radio that he runs his conspiracy spirit conspiracy theory broadcasts out of. Oh. I recommend steering clear of the guy, but I don't know. Maybe there's some truth to his stories. I wish you kids the best of luck. If anything else comes this way, we'll take care of it. And as he does that, one of the good shells kind of flies out because he just cocked the gun a second time after having cocked it before. Um, <laughs> and he goes like, oops. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like, oh, whoops. This isn't a movie. As he picks it up and kind of feeds it back into the shotgun. Um, and then he points down into the service tunnel. Jimmy's gonna, Jimmy's gonna grab like a, uh, like a hatchet, axe, something before he goes in. Okay. Yeah, you can do so. Does, does anybody have like like a like a pen or or a marker? Uncle Gary, Uncle Gary, I have my entire art set in my backpack. And he like points at his legs, and yes. they're like yes, dripping yes. and soggy and. So she'll unzip smudged. her backpack, get out her. She's got one special box that's just art supplies, and it's ink. So she'll he's probably like, use. He's like fall. It's been used it falls pink. over. Just he's like. Give, give him hooves. Give I him hooves. I can't feel my legs. I, I can't. <laughs> give him uh, hooves. He'll be faster. I can't feel my legs. Wait, hooves? No, wait, no. Just normal feet. <laughs> okay, so. Maybe roll my legs. Jeff, oh, we'll draw him his legs. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't get carried he'll, away. She'll draw his legs and put high heels on him. No, 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 no. I need to be so, like, no, 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 this. Oh, no, do this. Do, do unicorn horn. I'm running horn. in heels. You can run in heels. I've never walked in heels. You'll learn. Do so, a unicorn that's horn. Don't you dare. Don't you listen to me. Done. As long as the GM says it's done. Oh, give him fishnets. <laughs> no. I'm not putting that much effort in. We don't have that no, much time. That's a lot of She has successfully drawn in the remainder of your jeans, except they're now those jeans that were that a lot of, of girls wore in the 80s that I forget what they're called, but they're basically, they don't go all the way. They're kind of like a capri, capri pant. Yeah. Kind of like a capri pant, uh, which means they go down about halfway down your calves uh, so that they're everybody can see the high heels that you are now wearing. 
Oh no. If you didn't already have a um you didn't already have a physical consequence, you would definitely have a physical <laughs> consequence for the high heels. You've changed my temporary consequence to a permanent one. This didn't help at all. <laughs> Tomiko says missed opportunity. Could have given, given you spring instead of legs. <laughs> or one wheel like a unicycle. You could have given me She's robot a legs valley with a girl. jet pack. What else you would a valley girl so, do? You could have put guns on them. I could have erased everything. Ah! <laughs> no! This sucks! I hate being a cartoon man! I guess you'll start giving better Christmas presents. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a job. I will not get a job. How dare you? <laughs> you know I'm better than that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so I have like 20 coach, bucks. <laughs> is that why Coach, like, you know. Hey. You know? Careful, hey, Jimmy. Now. I may be a cartoon, but I could produce a mallet out of nothing, okay? Yeah, you did great. Oh, in I can't barn. find one. Oh, crap. <laughs> I don't know where one is. Okay, now that he has legs, I'm going to go ahead and go into the uh, so, underground tunnel. Is everybody going into the tunnel? Yeah. Yep. Flashlight in hand. My like... once lightsaber axe in hand. Nice. Jimmy's got a hatchet. You've got an axe. I just imagine there's this scene where Jimmy, he he grabbed what he could find, and then as you guys are heading down and you're now in the tunnel with this flashlight, he Jimmy confidently holds up this hatchet, and Boom. then and then you step in the frame into the light, holding this wood chopper's axe. <laughs> blade on both sides <laughs> <laughs> you are now down in the tunnel it is dark and narrow there are uh, it's it's wet down here um <laughs> and it is uh it's not necessarily claustrophobically tight but it's tight enough that you can't really walk more than single file um, I need to know who's taking the lead. I thought that I thought Jimmy had gone in first. Not that I'm throwing you under the bus. I am. That feels like a Jimmy thing. <laughs> is it, is, <laughs> when you're saying it's wet, is it like mucky? Like my and Uncle Gary's heels are gonna get kind of stuck as we walk? No, it's this. This is like a like a uh, poured concrete tunnel. So okay. it's more like you're splashing like in condensation, kind of. It's dripping water pipes from the pumps. The, okay. The, the the pump pipes from the okay. lake. All right. I'm kind of strutting as I as I walk now. So, Jimmy, you're going to be the one, and this is very fitting, potentially. As you are navigating the tunnel, I would like you to make a grit check. Oh, figures. <laughs> yeah, good grit, right? Yeah, but because oh, of the D one hundred table, if it if he maxes out, it does not. Ah, <laughs> uh, great, great, great. Tamigo, oh, don't even think about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I don't know what the reference four. is, but I know it would be trouble. A four. Oh man, this is not a good night for rolls when we need high ones. <laughs> so, as you are, uh, let's see, uh, I would like somebody to make brains check. In I fact, vote Wilson. In fact, I would like everybody to make a brains check except for, uh, Jimmy, who I almost called Larry for some reason. Larry. <laughs> Larry Actually, the uh, Jimmy's stepdad is named Larry. <laughs> well, see, I'm not the only four going on. This, this brains uh. check, by the way, is a tiered check. Whatever the low tier is, get real familiar with that, because that's where we're going to be <laughs> oh, at. <geez. laughs> 
four, four. You got a four, a four, a two. You got a two. <laughs> Uh, Wilson, what do you got? On Wilson. Knock it out of the park. 17! Yay! Yay! So, I called it. Wilson. You should have just let me pick him. You guys are moving very slowly. Jimmy... Jimmy is not very good at being in the front of the pack. Uh, he, there's portions of this tunnel that are partially caved in. And in trying to squeeze his way through... He's, Everything looks good. He's pushing against the pipes, which is causing water, like brackish water, to drip down on top of everybody. It's Ugh. also, when he presses against it, the entire thing, which is hanging from these metal hangers, goes <laughs> reverberating down the tunnel. Jimmy? And, Wilson, that's when you hear muffled. The ground above this tunnel can't be more than three or four feet Thick. and you can hear whatever part of the ranch you are walking under you hear it would stop you stop. hear the sound of a drone flying back and forth in a search pattern oh no don't move jimmy don't move what You're making <laughs> Jimmy, don't move. You're making too much freaking noise. I need noise. everybody to make flight. Why am I whispering? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the trolls to hear us. I need everybody to make flight checks. <laughs> You're this building is... the atmosphere. Are we in <laughs> ASMR channel now? Yes. <laughs> in order Wait, to one? see what if you we... avoid detection, I would like flight? you all to roll flight. <gasps> yes. This is how we do stealth. This is a pass or fail. Uh, Jasmine rolled a seven. I'm trying to see who's okay. So that would be that's a ten for. This is appropriate since I'm noisy and loud. As a flaw. <laughs> so, okay. So, Jasmine, you stop perfectly still. You're not even. You're not making a sound. Ellie May. Even Jasper poking out of your backpack is dead silent. Jimmy, you actually do successfully hold very still. It's at that moment that Gary realizes almost like very cartoonishly like you suddenly realize wait a minute i don't know how to walk in high heels and immediately <laughs> you do that high heel sort of ankle rolling but not kind of stumble step and you fall into wilson knocking wilson into an old uh there's like this old metal uh like control like access panel that the door was partially open on and when you knock Wilson into it, it does that. You know how like a, a school locker metal door, when you hit it a certain way, it goes. Yeah. That's exactly what happens. And that noise reverberates through this tunnel and goes. And you hear overhead. And you hear the sound of a drone hovering directly overhead. We're screwed. And then... Oh. It flies away. I, Enough this of you... Is the point where we need to run. More of you succeeded than failed. So that is a group success. Oh. You're welcome. After about 20 minutes... Jimmy, you reach the end of the tunnel and there is a metal ladder set into the wall. It's those like like uh, the metal rungs that are individually pushed into the concrete leading up to another green metal door and you can see the, the brass wheel to turn it to open it. Green and brass. Ooh, like mm. a submarine. 
A green door with brass handle? No yep. way. <laughs> Are you going up? Yeah. Only way to go. You pop up into another pump house. There's not enough room for all of you, so you will have to open the door. And I would like, since Jimmy, you're the first one out. I would like you I'm trying to think of how to do this. Be careful, Jimmy. I want you to roll a I want you to roll a D one hundred. And if you're within I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how I want to do this. I got it. I'd say within a hundred. Roll a D one hundred. <laughs> within a hundred. Oh damn. Ninety one. Okay. So the way I was doing this was um and I'll just reveal to you what my split was. Basically one one to thirty three was that you were gonna run into Nathan Woods, the retired sheriff. Oh, man. 34 to 66, nobody was going to be out there. If you rolled a 100, an alien entity was going to be there. But you rolled within the 67 to 99. You opened the door, and you are face to face with a wild haired like long unkempt hair it's kind of balding for the most part but he's got this long wavy hair he's wearing a 1980s style wide frame set of glasses and behind them he has another set of round glasses so these mm -hmm. are kind of set down like makeshift bifocals but the effect is that it makes his eyes appear very very uh, round and wide. He has a set of headphones on and he's holding what looks like a miniature radar dish. And uh, some, of, I think Wilson would immediately recognize that he's holding a parabolic microphone. Mm -hmm. He is wearing a flannel bathrobe, a dirty linen uh button up shirt that's only halfway buttoned up he's wearing uh gray sweatpants and he is wearing very dirty blue bunny slippers can i add that he sounds like from the vacation movies the uncle that was living in the thing and he was dumping his sewage into the pipes <laughs> that's the vision that i have when you that's... described him 2012. That's one disaster movie. I, yeah, I was actually leaning towards where where J, uh, Jay went, which was Woody Harrelson in 20 that, in 2012. That's the quintessential. Yep. Anytime I yep. ever hear of someone so who's like, yeah, think, he's a little bit of a crazy. I think it's a mix of uh, Randy Quaid and uh, uh, Woody Harrelson. Uh, pushing both of those together to get this guy. So you That's see this guy to imagine. standing in <laughs> front of you. Guys. You see this guy standing in front of you, Jimmy. And as you pop out, he uh, he looks startled seeing you. And hmm, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Jimmy, I want you to roll a. Uh, I want you to roll a charm check. This is this is going to be straight up first impressions as you yeah. pop out of the pop out of the the tunnel here. Oh, whoa, whoa! Exploded. Thirteen, and I'm gonna say, is it the Russians? You got a 13. So <laughs> believe it or not, uh, Cam Alexander here has a D4 for charm. <laughs> oh, what a surprise. <laughs> it's a super and he rolls a one. 
Um, <laughs> as you say, is it the Russians? He immediately uh, goes ha! and <laughs> takes a free hand and covers his backside and says, you ain't going to probe me again. <laughs> And he turns and starts to run um, as he tries to make a a run away from you. Um, I'm he gonna gets, yell. He Get gets, back here! He gets about <laughs> he gets about twelve feet away from you, and he trips over a fallen log and goes sprawling, and this close to the lake the ground is sort of squishy and saturated and so now he's damp as he turns his parabolic his headphones are all askew his glasses are all askew and he's backpedaling away from you get back away from me i know you're one of them aliens you're just looking like a people <laughs> wait till he sees uncle gary <laughs> would an alien have hair like this and I think this is about the time the rest of you start climbing out from this other end from the pump house. And a couple of things you notice uh, as you see Gary, uh, sorry, as you see uh, Jimmy sort of approaching this, this wild looking man laying on the ground. You also all become very aware of the fact that you are next to, um, you are next to the lake, which is, uh, trying to see if I had the name of the lake here, uh, Highland Lake. And it's not a huge lake. And if it, if, if it were something other than size that designated it as a lake, you would swear it was more of a, a, a marshy pond. Um, you realize that you are 200 yards away from the giant black obelisk that quite at this close a distance it looks like an incredibly large version of the piece of tech that Jimmy is carrying the alien tech with the tripod legs, holding it up. And, uh, you can see that plant life from the pond or from the lake. Uh, there's a small Island in the middle that this thing is partially perched on. And you can see that any of the plant life in the area has turned black and turned into these vines that are snaking up around the legs of this thing. And you can also see, uh, as the last of you emerge from the pump house, uh, we, you hear the clacking, um, uncoordinated sound of Gary's high heels as he steps out of the pump house, no longer animated. But wearing capri pants and oh, high heels. No. <laughs> and I think that's where we're going to end part two. <laughs> <laughs> we so, ended on a comic note. Yeah, I don't so awesome. from above me, and it, finally you can kind of see my real face, and then it gets down to my legs where there's <laughs> these like dirty looking. I, that's beautiful. I have a request that the last thing we hear. Uh, upon Gary seeing everything is is Gary in Gary's voice says zoinks yeah. <laughs> he goes zoinks <laughs> doesn't sound anything like a cartoon mm -mm. Um, but yeah that's where we're going to end part two uh, you have made it to the alien craft you have made connection with Cam Alexander the conspiracy theorist um and uh you're that much closer to helping Serafina. Um I I saw I noticed in the chat I don't remember exactly, but I do remember that I had you roll I think a D4 when you got cartooned. Um I think it was a few hours. 
and I, I, I think I enough time two. has. I swear it was two. Yeah, and enough time has passed that uh, that it made sense. I kind of wanted that <laughs> once you got put because I was gonna uncartoon you at the beginning of the tunnel, and then everybody was suggesting things that that you should have for legs and when she decided <laughs> to draw heels on you i'm like oh no he's walking through this tunnel with high heels <laughs> and i liked the reveal of you coming out of yep. the tunnel in uh, no longer cartooned um <laughs> it's like that moment of like oh yeah and then oh man <laughs> so uh, huge shout out and thank you to uh, our channel moderator and MVP Tamiko, Tamiko uh, who yeah. donated a bunch of domain pots Massive to you all, love. specifically allowing that that draw for Craig. Um, and uh, welcome to thanks to Tamiko, 10, 10 new people that have subs. Um, I think if I if I take in. It also puts us at 40 subscribers. I didn't put the sub goal on this game, oh, but yeah. we have a 50 oh. sub goal for the month with a, 10 days left in the month, and it's September. Uh, all yep. subs are 30% off. Um, I so, did during your Iron game, Iron Giants. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, Tomiko the MVP, um, for, for all sure. of that. And... Uh, Let's see. Um, this game was part two. Part three will happen not next Friday, the 27th, um, because I will be over on... Um, Nerdarchy. I will be on Nerdarchy for another of our... Yeah, pay uh, attention. Um, old Guard game with Ted. Um, and... Uh, Asa and Frag and our GM Robin. Uh, but the following Friday, the which is October, October 4th, will be the third and final part of Welcome to Hell, Michigan. Did um, we make it far enough that the three is going to be it? I said one way or another, three is going to be it. I okay, never guaranteed it. that any or all uh, of you would survive this game. Um That's true. But it is the final part. Uh, I can guarantee that. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. You've got two weeks to think about what you want to do. Um, and I, I saw in the chat something that you said, Jay, about uh, being all out of poop because of the M80s. <laughs> but hey, you know what? Poop's a renewable resource. Jesus. <laughs> yellow light. Yellow light. <laughs> I said it and I'm going to yellow light it. Uh, I don't like it. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you all. Uh, thank you everybody who showed up hanging out in chat. Um, um, as always, I can't keep up with the chat while I'm running a game, obviously. I take glances at it. But I love seeing that people are interacting and having fun in the chat, especially when the players are interacting with the audience and stuff. Um, I love all that. It does my heart good. Um, but we're now two sessions into a three-parter. I'm glad we made it a three-parter because I've been having a blast playing with all of you. Um, I want to run more one shots, um, and three shots and what have you, uh, because it gives me a chance to play with people I don't normally get to play with or in combinations of players that I don't normally get to play with. Um, We've got, uh, as I said, part three of this is coming up in October, and um, there's something on the horizon that some people already know about, Sarah specifically. Uh, there's something on the horizon coming in November that when I have a little more information, I will be, um, I will be updating everyone to that. But you'll want to you'll want to stay tuned. There's another trilogy coming in November. Uh, not Earth kids on bikes. Denver? It's not kids on bikes, but um, regardless, we'll keep an eye on that. But I've enjoyed uh, playing with all of you, and I look forward to, to getting to final finalize this game in a couple of weeks. So yeah. um, I want to say once again, 
A huge thank you to these amazing players, Jay, Sarah, Craig, Zach, and Michelle, without whom this would have just been me talking to myself for a couple hours. With that, we're going to go ahead and end this stream the same way we end every stream. You can say it with me if you want. Metadata. Metadata. Hello.